Hi, I'm Robert from Part Fusion Electronics, and today I'm going to show you a project example using lots of my SOW RGB pixels. In this design, I've got 40 pixels in a 5x8 grid, making a basic dot matrix display. The SOW RGB is based on the WS2812 self-driving and addressable RGB pixel, RGB LED. So the signal comes in from the bottom and goes along the traces and then they're connected one after the other all the way to the top. So some things to watch out for when using these um, pixels is, is that the there are three LEDs inside each pixel. And if all three are on, the um, current needed is about 60 milliamps, which is quite a lot for a, a wearable project. So when we're designing the or laying out the design, what we need to do is make sure we have as low a resistance as possible. Um, so in this design, I have a ground trace and I also have a positive trace here. And what I've used is I've used a double strand of the the two ply or thick stainless steel conductive thread available from Spark Funny Electronics. This um, has a resistance of about 5 ohms per 30 centimeters. And that's in comparison to the regular or the more regular silver coated conductive thread, which has a resistance. This is the 4 ply. This has a resistance of about 30 ohms per 30 centimeters. So it's quite significantly different. So I, the, the, Stainless steel trace goes along here, and then I use the silver coated thread to go across, connecting the positive and negative sides together, because the silver coat is a bit easier to work with when we're um, attaching our, our pixels. Another issue that I've come across in some designs is that the, can, there can be a noticeable flicker on the pixels in real life that doesn't necessarily show up in, in, on camera. Um, and that's caused by the impedance of the circuit. Um, on each pixel there's a, a single capacitor, and to overcome that we need mu to add much more capacitance to the circuit. So in this design, I've got these yellow boards here, and they're a small little board with two surface mount capacitors on it. So I designed up this um, little board and then so and, and sold that into this design. Um, if you don't have the ability to make your own boards, what you can do is you can just use regular through-hole capacitors. So I've got some aluminium can capacitors here, and I've got some ceramic and a ceramic capacitor here. And so what these can do is you can bend the lead wires around, and then sew that into place around around your circuit. If you have an existing design that may have ex flicker issues, what you can do is get a capacitor and connect around in your circuit between the positive and negative rails and, and just kind of loop it in through the existing threads and see if that makes an improvement and then if it does you can add them in more permanently. Um, in my original board when I, I, I sewed this up a couple of months ago I only had one capacitor on the pixel so here's the original pixel there's only one capacitor so what I've come up with is a new version of the SO RGB pixel and this one has got three capacitors on each board. So when you're using this new pixel you almost don't need to have any extra capacitance on the circuit but it doesn't really matter too much if you do add some, add some extra. So what am I going to do with this panel now? Well earlier in the week I got myself a spectrum shield from Spark Fun Electronics. And this has a chip on it, which is a graphical equalizer. So that takes in our sound and splits it up into seven channels and allows our Arduino code to detect the amplitude in each of those bands. And then we can form a, a graphic equalizer. So if I just take, um, if I turn on the Arduino, goes through a basic boot sequence 
And then if I play some music to my laptop. So there's some sample code on the Sparkfun website based on the Bliptronics code. And that uh, allows you to interface your, to write a sketch that interfaces with the, um, the graphic equalizer chip. I then take in that, those sample data, average them out. Then I use the Adafruit NeoPixel library to drive the RGB pixels to create the pattern. Um, the tones I generated using Audacity, and then I use Linux Multimedia Studio to kind of string them together. So what my plans are is to actually use the chip off the, the shield directly. And that the, the chip, I got some of the chips here. So that's the MSG EQ7. So I'm hoping to use that chip in some of my own projects going forward. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn out the lights and I'm going to play a longer piece of music. Um, and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.